Secretary General, thank you so much for joining us here on America's Now. A pleasure. What made you determine that intervention was needed in Venezuela? And, and why do you think that the OAS needs to get involved? Uh, I don't think uh, we need intervention. Intervention is not the concept that we are, uh, with what we are dealing with Asia. I think the main point here is that every country in the continent has a commitment related to the Inter-American Democratic Charter. And that you have to fulfill what is established in the Articles 3 and 4. Therefore, we need, when these responsibilities are not fully uh, committed by uh, some countries, to request that solutions should be provided by this country or the system should act in order to make this, uh, these commitments that the countries have according to the Charter um, possible. Some people would take issue with that. Other countries believe that you are trying to intervene in Venezuela, but what would you say is happening that is having you call this meeting? What are you concerned it is, uh, about? It is not about intervention. Very clear, it, uh, that's not the case. Uh, here we are dealing with commitments that countries have according to the Inter-American Democratic Charter, and you have to fulfill those commitments. Article 3 and 4, they establish the uh, basic principles for democracy and the necessary elements for the practice of, dem of democracy. When we deal with that, of course, countries, they have a responsibility about that. And in the case of Venezuela, definitely we ha have found certain problems that they are, the way the institutions are working, that some ne action is needed by the organization. And that is what we have requested. What kind of actions? This action is, uh, first of all, if you read Article 20 of the Inter-American Democratic Charter, it's mainly about uh, mediation, dialogue, the um, diplomatic work. And, uh, and about that, it can add some diplomatic mission in, the, in order to deal with the case. It's a gradual and progressive process. And, uh, and this gradual and progressive process, of course, have to deal with an approximation, an approach to this problem in order to be fixed by the Venezuelans. That's, uh, that's the, main, the main issue, the main task here. Some of your member states have been pretty quiet about their feelings of what should be done. Um, Cuba says as long as this is happening, it will not rejoin the OAS. Do you think you have support, enough support, two-thirds support, of the other member states for something to happen? If you see the Article 20, you can, uh, it is very clear that uh, a simple majority is needed in order to assess the situation and in order to provide the diplomatic uh, assistance of the organization related to this uh, matter. We respect any national position about this and, and we put into consideration of the countries this proposal invoke the Article 20 of the Charter, and that is how the work to go on. Dealing with the countries, coordinating with the countries, and the countries finding the decision that is better for the case. Some of the countries uh, in the OAS are calling for more dialogue. Do you think that is enough? Can Venezuela solve its own problems? Uh, and about dialogue, we have said in our report, if you take uh, Chapter 12 of the conclusions, you can find that uh, we have asked uh, for dialogue. In, in fact, we have said, the problems created by a lack of dialogue must be resolved or more dialogue must be created. There is no worse sign of malfunctioning political system than when there are no fundamental premises for dialogue between political parties, the government, the opposition and social actors. When the equation 50% plus one vote equals 100% and 50% less one vote equals zero. And we have added a quote of uh, Jose Antonio Marina saying, rabbits don't spread from a dead dog. Doesn't even apply to dogs. What is important is the rabbit bacillus disappears. A problem is only solved when you, have, you, when you say values for coexistence. Otherwise, it will grow back. So we have insisted in dialogue, but this dialogue has to be very strong basis. It's not, Dialogue is very difficult, very different than to sit and talk. What we are talking here, what we need to fix here, is 
real solutions for the real problems that Venezuela has. Do you think everyone can come together and find solutions? Is that what you're hoping for? Yes, we have um, make, you see, eight recommendations, very specific solutions for very specific problems, institutional problems that Venezuela has today. What are some of the solutions? Some, uh, we can identify uh, some of them. First of all, it is very necessary that recall referendum should be called this year because that will provide to the citizens of Venezuela their own decision about their own future. Second, we need to establish a balance between the different branches of government in Venezuela, something completely different than what is going on, that every action of the legislative power is completely blocked. There. We need a different integration of the judiciary power that can bring solutions, the real solutions, in order to bring justice to the Venezuelan people. We need a different integration of the Cruz Commission that should have international technical support in order to achieve the result that the Commission wants to, to achieve. We need to open inter international channels to assist Venezuela in the humanitarian crisis, crisis that it's facing and that is a very important and relevant point and where we should work all together because this, what we are talking here is about people that is eaten one and a half times per day or people that is not getting their antibiotics when they have an infection, people that they are dying because of chronic diseases because it is impossible to find the treatment and this is the humanitarian side that we have to take care and fix the solutions. You mentioned a recall referendum, yes. but a lot of Venezuelans will argue that President Maduro is a legitimate, democratically elected yes. head of state. Yes, it's what we argue too. I mean, uh, President Maduro was el elected and we need to res respect his mandate. Plus, he needs to respect the Constitution. The Constitution opens the possibility for the society, for the people of Venezuela, to have a referendum to recall his term if they don't feel happy with that. They are collecting signatures for that. So if this process goes according to the Constitution, if no, if not more obstacles are created, then we let the people decide. And this is the decision of the people is very needed when we have a polarization of the political system that we have in Venezuela. You and President Nicolas Maduro had some very fiery exchanges in social media, uh, online, in the media. Um, his government has called you a puppet and said that you are working with the opposition and the United States. What is your reaction to that? You know, I need to defend my impartiality. And that's why I just made one answer to President Maduro. And I think was good enough. Um, to make clear, my impartiality, I am not a CIA agent, agent as he claimed, uh, that he needs to respect his people and provide the, the, the necessary for this recall, recall referendum to be, to, to be uh, uh, in term during this year. He needs also to provide justice for all his citizens. So what we ask is are basic political principles that uh, sometimes are very necessary to make, to, to make him remember about Venezuela. But it was very constructive, and our approach was to be able to, to build, of course. There has been criticism that the OAS uh, doesn't have a lot of influence anymore with all the other regional blocs that are out there and they're competing. Um, you became Secretary General mm. a year ago. What are you hoping to accomplish? Are you trying to make the OAS more relevant? You see that the, uh, today there can be discussion about practically everything else, but nobody is saying anymore that the OAS is irrelevant. In fact, the, what they are complaining today is that the OAS is too relevant, too much relevant. So what we have now is a completely different situation that we have what we were talking one and a half years ago, year ago. The thing is, uh, today, what we want to accomplish, you know, the OAS is the best organization that exists in the world. It's a, the one that has the best juridical instruments in order to defend democracy and, human, and protect human rights. Plus, it has the mechanism to make that possible. 
So it's just every day, wake up and work about that. And that is what I want to accomplish. Is there anything else that you want the world to know? Any last words, any final thoughts as, as you go forward in this process? I don't have second thoughts about this process. And I am very open and very clear uh, about what I do. And my cards are all on the table and, uh, and everybody can, can see them. Uh, and so I think uh, it's about, uh, it's about uh, just uh, uh, what I have just told you, to have the, the moral attitude. Because in these cases, uh, you have to be ethical in your decisions. Because it's uh, un committed to the people of Venezuela. We have to deal with a situation that is very hard for the country. But it's very hard for the political system. But it's harder for, for everybody, for the, the normal people in Venezuela. When you have to, in order to get food, you have to uh, do things that are not, uh, not just going to the queue in the supermarket and, uh, and find them. Then you really are facing a problem. If you have an infection and you cannot treat yourself, there you're having a problem. If you have a chronic disease and you cannot treat yourself, there we have a problem. That is very concerned, is very related to, to the normal people. And that uh, we have to keep in mind in order to focus and provide the necessi necessary solutions for this. Secretary General Luis Almagro, thank you so much for joining us here on America's Now. A great pleasure.